Our bear population was pretty robust before it was settled. Over time, our bear population got pretty low. We think maybe down into the 300s. A Florida black bear has a home range uh, of about 60 square miles for a male and about 15 square miles for females. And of course that's complicated for bears in the Chazowitzki ecosystem because there's just not that much area around. So they have to incorporate other places like developments and you know crossing major highways to get to other available habitat. And that could be you know perilous at times. And one of the issues that we've had over here in uh, Chazowitzka is that the, the bear population has been kind of isolated from other populations for a really long time. Um, at one point in time, it had the, the lowest genetic diversity of any bear population in the state of Florida. That's important because uh, when you have, starting to have a genetically depressed population, other things, sicknesses, things like that, malformations can arise. This area of Florida, you know, it's considered the nature coast. That's what we call this, this part of Florida. So there's a lot of water-dominated recreation uh, over on this side of the state. But the thing that's really kind of uh, an untapped you know, gem over here in the Nature Coast is the uplands. If you actually take a look at this area from a satellite view, you have a coastal marsh that goes into mixed hardwood swamp, which comes into a sand hill, pine ecosystem, and then, you know, it just continues to move across the landscape changing every every so often and that's important to manage that kind of ecosystem properly one of the great things that's happening in florida is the focus on creating wildlife corridors throughout the state where we can have large animals like bears and panther and and deer and other things that are moving back and forth across the landscape relatively uninterrupted you know, DOT and uh, the state and the counties are all working pretty hard to try to get that accomplished. The project is taking the Suncoast Parkway from US 98 north to State Road 44. And on the east side and the west side is the Withacoochee State Forest. And so as part of continuing wildlife movement or allowing the continuation of wildlife movement, we're having a, a wildlife crossing a bridge that will go through this area to allow wildlife to go through underneath. We also have uh, four wildlife culverts, oversized culverts in this area and, and a little bit to the north that small mammals and reptiles will be able to utilize. When the project was originally being planned back in the 90s, Florida black bear was the primary species that was of concern. And, and knowing that they're in the Chazakawiska and they do migrate into the eastern side of Citrus County, we wanted to make sure that there was a safe corridor for them that they could, they could use. It's a new approach. The conversations with the agencies, they felt like that the best way of mitigating the impacts of the roadway were to purchase land in the region that were located adjacent to existing conservation lands that were managed by Florida Department of Environmental Protection, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, or the Florida Forest Service. So the idea was to be able to add on to land that they already own and manage to expand their properties provide additional benefit to the region as far as conservation for species and for habitat. It's very innovative and, and I think it, it provides a benefit for the state of Florida, for the residents and the wildlife that inhabit this region. In Florida, having something like the Florida Wildlife Corridor is important because it's not only incorporating conservation lands now managed by the state, counties, local governments, but it's also incorporating private lands. And we want people to have these animals on their, on their lands and appreciate that.
Well, we're like fifth generation Floridians, and we just like we like the wildlife, we like the woods, uh, we like the property to stay like it is, really. When we first came up here, Mike Orlando was doing a study on the bears, and of course he came back here and I went with him put, helping track bears, put collars on them, that kind of thing back then. We had a lot of bears get killed on the highway out here by cars, and really there's, I don't think there's that many left in here anymore, but uh, there are some. Uh, we've had two or three bears up here. We had one walk up on the deck all the way around the house, uh, look in the bedroom window, and then we've had bears across the creek stood there and just, we had one sit there and just sit on the bank and look at us for about 15 minutes. We were offered a tremendous amount of money and we just decided, no, this, we want to keep it like this. You, you probably couldn't find another place like this hardly anywhere, you know. Just in the last couple of years, we've actually done a, an updated population estimate. In, in Ocala, we have about 1,200 bears. In uh, Apalachicola, we're just over 1,000. Down in Big Cypress, uh, we're just over 1,000. The two populations that we're really most concerned about in the state are Highlands County. It's about 150. We think that we only have around 20 to 30 animals here in the Chazowitzka ecosystem. And the reason is because they are a little more isolated from, from the other ones, uh, a little more habitat fragmentation and loss. So we, we are paying attention to movement of bears across the landscape to get to these populations. Uh, that's very important to us. Uh, we do worry about the amount of loss of habitat that's going on in the state. And uh, that's why we really support things like the Florida Wildlife Corridor that's moving uh, up and down the state and across the state to, to increase population sizes and movement. Being successful at protecting the Florida Wildlife Corridor means that we will have these lands and waters for many generations to come but it can't be done with a public dollar alone. That's why this organization is looking at opportunities to partner with groups like the Department of Transportation to collaboratively work on conservation that will benefit wildlife while allowing economic development and growth to occur in the most responsible ways. The more you care about these beautiful, wild places in Florida, the more you will be able to share the message with your community and elected officials and become champions of these places to make sure we can all permanently connect, protect, and restore the Florida Wildlife Corridor. You and me meant to be in the great outdoors forever free You and me meant to be